All right, number one, so multiple means of engagement. There are checkpoints uh, and there are uh, guidelines. So on your handout, you'll see the guidelines are in bold and then the checkpoints are underneath. Okay, so what I'm showing here are the guidelines. So the three major guidelines for pr promoting multiple means of engagement are self-regulation, sustained effort and persistence in recruiting interests. Self-regulation has to do with students being aware of how they learn best. Sustained effort and persistence has to do with uh, being able to be motivated and persist in their work. And then, of course, recruiting interest is how, applic how applicable or um, practical is what they're doing. So each one of those options can be used. Don't get the impression that you have to do all of this. All right? No one is 100% UDL. You bite off little pieces. You pick away at it. All right. Um, so the example we have uh, is from the school vet, Lindy Johnson, and she chose to uh, look at engagement in terms of how the students work with the material, and she used a concept called play uh, or gamification uh, for her project. So let's hear what she has to say, and then we'll illustrate what she. But for the UDL workshop, I actually my plan was to create an online module for students introducing them to some of the basic concepts of lesson planning. Basically, I gave them a design challenge. I said, you have to create a game, an analog board game, um, that would teach high school students to practice their argumentative thinking skills. And I gave them some parameters because they were actually going to be designing for real kids and a real teacher in a local high school. And then they worked collaboratively in groups to create these board games and to create rules and things like that to teach the kids. So anyway, it actually worked out beautifully and I found that my students were so much more engaged. They loved collaboratively creating something tangible. Um, I found that for whatever reason, maybe that because they're English majors or, or whatever, um, my students tend to be pretty technology averse. Like they don't love Blackboard. They don't, I mean, nobody loves Blackboard, but <laughs> they don't love um, they're just, they don't, they're kind of resistant with technology, um, maybe a little suspicious of it. And so this, this analog piece and the creating used multiple modalities to really engage them in the content. I had one student who emailed me after the, so, so they designed the game, right? They, they piloted it, they showed the teacher and they got feedback. They iterated on that design, created a new design. Um, and then we went out and played the game with real high school students. And um, after that, that, the day after we did that, one of my students emailed me and said that was the most spectacular experience I've ever had with kids yeah. and learning. And this was just absolutely amazing. So um, the feedback from the kids was, from the students, was just tremendous. I mean, they were, they absolutely loved it and they could really see the value um, of this game-based learning and are really, uh, many of them are very interested in figuring out how to then use this into their, their own classrooms, which is obviously what we want is we want them to be able to like transfer, you know, those skills into their own um, practice. There are a million different ways that they could have learned, you know, that they could have taken a quiz, they could have written um, a lesson plan. I do use a lot of different modalities in my classroom. I think that's really important, but I think that for this particular topic, which is very complex and very abstract, that grounding it in um, this kind of board game approach was really successful for them. All right. Thank you, Lindy. So here's the part we can talk with your mouthful. What did you notice in Lindy's case about how students could engage or interact with the content? What were her multiple pathways to engagement? Yep. Yep. So there's the collaboration piece. There, the, the common goal that they have to discuss. Yep. Anything else that you noticed? That's right. Yep. Yep. So the the option to kind of go a couple different directions. Uh, th that's the multiple pathways. Not every group did the same game and had the same output, but their learning experience met the same goal, which was to critically think about how best to teach these principles to high school English students. So if I were to use the green column there to kind of frame this out, uh, they designed a practical product. That's an idea of recruiting interest, 
right, because it's practical and, and folks are motivated when they know they can use something. Um, they collaboratively created, Nathan already mentioned this, but the idea is they are going to have sustained effort and persistence. They iterate, they get feedback, and they have another iteration of their project. And then finally, they have throughout the project an opportunity to uh, apply and uh, 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 reflect, I should say, um, and then apply what they've made and then reflect on it again. So uh, this process really is a process that has multiple checkpoints. And depending on the student, they might be stronger in one area and stronger or stronger in another. And that's okay because they have these different experiences. So in this example, I think it's a great example of that green column. How can you engage students in ways that are not just different than what you typically do, but allow for a range of possibilities? All right? Sounds like a lot of work, right? It, it can be, but again, if you design your instruction with this in mind, you can um, start small. 